In the coming years, low and middle income countries will be richer and consuming more, which will increase overall global energy demands. And as the climate fight continues, the adoption of energy efficient technologies by these emerging markets for everyday items will be even more important to managing the growth of these energy demands. One example of this can be found in Nairobi, Kenya, where the primary household energy consumer for low income households are traditional charcoal stoves used for cooking. There are more efficient and cost effective stove alternatives that could help in the adoption of energy efficiency, yet, the lower income households have not widely adopted them. So these uh, charcoal stoves you should think about are uh, kind of metal canisters that you put charcoal in the middle and then you have a grate that you cook on top of. And the charcoal that goes into these, in, into these stoves in order to provide meals is equivalent to about 14% of the, out, the income that households earn every week. So this is a large amount of the energy that they're currently consuming. And so we think that by helping us understand how they make decisions about whether to adopt an efficient version of that stove or a less efficient version of that stove, that'll help us get some insights into kind of how we think about the adoption of energy efficient technologies more broadly in these types of contexts as we go forward. That is Chicago Booth's Joshua Dean. He and his co-author, Susanna Burkauer, worked with the Busara Center for Behavioral Economics in Nairobi to conduct a field study with 1,000 lower income households in Kenya. The experiment sought how willing participants would be to adopt a $40 stove which would use half the amount of charcoal per year as their current stoves, which only range between two and five dollars. The researchers had families fill out an accounting exercise, making clear the potential savings of investing in a more efficient stove. What they found is that this did not change the behavior of these households. So we set out to see is the reason that households aren't adopting these stoves because of uh, uh, the returns are not as good as the engineering estimates promise, so maybe they aren't actually worth the money. Is it because of a financing problem where households just don't have the money today in order to take care of the and take advantage of the savings in the future? Or is it that households don't really realize the amount of money that they could possibly save? So we start out first by randomly assigning subsidies so that the price of the stove is different for different households. And by comparing households assigned to pay a high price for the stove with households that pay a low price for the stove, we can causally estimate how much money the stove saves each household. And what we find is that the stove saves households $120 a year. So that's a 300% rate of return or equivalent to one month of income. So it's not that the engineering estimates don't match up to reality. This is a really big deal. But then we also ask households how much they're willing to pay. And we do this in an incentivized way. So households tell us the most that they're willing to pay, and then we draw their randomly assigned price. If the amount that they said that they're willing to pay is less than the randomly assigned price, they don't get to buy the stove at all. But if the randomly assigned price is below the most that they said that they're willing to pay, they only pay the subsidized price. So it's in their best interest to tell us the truth about how much they're willing to pay. The researchers found that the average price families were willing to pay was only $12, even though the proven cost savings would far exceed that cost. They then went to the next step, seeing what might increase the amount the households were willing to pay for the more efficient stoves. Remember, the two things that we set out to study is whether it's that they don't have the money today or whether they don't understand the effects of the stove on their savings. The other treatment that we look at is we offer households a three-month loan at a kind of reasonable interest rate for the area. And that we find more than doubles willingness to pay to $25 for the stove. And in fact, the $25 that they're now willing to pay is pretty close to the amount of money that they'll save from the stove over that three-month period. So it seems like households understand the benefits of these stoves, but that they just can't finance them today. It turns out that access to credit was the primary driver for these households being willing to invest in energy efficient upgrades. Many wealthy countries have adopted a carbon tax that makes consuming carbon fuels more costly, encouraging households to adopt carbon neutral energies. 
Given that the problem seems to be financing and that households don't have the ability to pay for the stove today, targeted credit being provided or subsidies on the stoves that reduce the upfront cost are more likely to increase adoption in this context more efficiently than something like a carbon tax that I, you would recommend in kind of a higher income context where people aren't adopting because they don't think the cost and benefits uh, make sense. Though the adoption of more efficient stoves isn't truly a non-carbon fuel alternative, incentives which include financing options for low-income households could have enormous benefits in the fight against climate change. All of which is possible when access to credit makes a simple, non-habit-changing, cost-effective climate change solution more accessible.